So first of all, I have to disclaim, I have just recently started looking into the Antico. So there's not a lot of things that I know about it so far, but what I do know is that it's one of the oldest books known to men on the Atlas. We think we dated back to roughly 1,500 years ago. It's actually not clear when it was written because it was delivered by the prophet, but it's unlikely that he wrote all of it. Uh, we think that it's a collection of prehistoric times, even before the ancient time, um, from the retelling of the war of men against the gods. And it's the foundation for ancestor reverence in Edeni, two of our most common religions, especially in the West, but also in the dynasty. Um, it's quite interesting that those two religions both are based on the same book, but then vary in a couple of very important ways. But the reason that they can be based on that book is because it's actually not necessarily a guide. So the Antigo is sometimes considered to be a, a two-part book. The first book is the Book of the Gods. The second book is the Book of Souls. And the Book of the Gods is actually very, very small. It has 111 verses. So it's in a lyrical form and it's a poem of sorts. It's really difficult to understand. It's quite interpretable. So there are a lot of theories about what actually happened. But what most people agree on is that describes the creation of the world and how mankind then becoming more powerful than the gods themselves became the rulers of the world. And then the second book is more of a fairy tale form where you have all these different stories. And it talks a bit about what humanity did once it had control of the Atlas, because once mankind uh, loses its common enemy, it is kind of left with itself. Within it discovers its own soul and all of a sudden this inward looking journey becomes about how do you follow this sort of moral paradigm so in, in a way it's about finding the proper path but it's a collection of mythology set in different parts of the atlas it's actually the strongest claim that the fundamentalists for the antigo have is that these places that are described are actually around like the bridges to Lyria, like the three valleys in agaiata which are described in detail in this book, seem to date back to things that actually happened. And so we, do, we don't know how much embellishment there is. And if the gods actually existed, of course, we don't, we don't know. But it seems quite likely that there's some foundation for it. So this is also why Edenus and Reverence very firmly believe that there is a goddess trapped below the earth in the demon realm. And then the interpretations vary on if that goddess is evil or not but they do believe the same thing. And the religions which were kind of based on the Antigo, the Antigo is just, um, it's just a base. It doesn't, it doesn't take any side necessarily. It's a, just a description of what happened. It is all about the, the interpretation of how can a moral paradigm kind of come from this. That's what the religions that came from that are about. Um, and that's also why they disagree sometimes. And so if you read the Antigo, it's, it's not really easy to see anything remarkable about it, but if you read it like a story, but then below it seems to be like a, a second and a third and a fourth layer of meaning, that it's not entirely easy to find it, right? To unearth it, but if you look closely, you can find it and you can kind of figure out what it means. And that's kind of the interesting part about it as well. You can read it and you can see, you know, the, the story is getting it, but then there's a layer under the surface where the story is actually trying to tell you something. Well, not, not trying to tell you something, it's not an allegory, it's a myth, right? So it is, there's some symbology below it. And um, it takes a smart head to, to spot it and understand it.